Through nuclear proliferation, globalization, and demographic dynamics, the world is now more competitive than ever. Populated with masses of peoples, weapons, and conflicts at an apocalyptic level. The Crypt 6 identifies six countries who are the greatest geopolitical hot zones in the world. They pose the greatest risk to the current world order established by the victors of World War II, which includes the UN Security Council, the IMF, World Bank, and NATO, which are all heavily tilted to the strengths of the West, the United States in particular. Without further ado, let's identify these Crypt Six and why they are important. For China. Of all the Crip 6 countries, China is by far the most developed and aware of its global position. It has political consolidation and a strategic framework on how to accomplish its goals through its population size, industrial capacity, and trade network. China has made itself the largest economy in the world and is still growing at a rate of 8.1% in 2021 alone. As it continues to grow economically, it will become more muscular in securing the global interest of its population without shame, regret, or hesitation. On the global stage, China walks in a sure-footed manner with a cavalier swag. R for Russia. Russia is the most European of the Crypt Six a holdover from the European age of discovery. While its Atlantic counterparts were selling to the farthest corners of the globe, Russians were expanding and exploring the vast Siberia of Northern Asia. In efforts that will culminate into creating the largest country in the world, Russia is a behemoth, nearly the size of all of South America combined with seemingly limitless resources while also possessing the largest nuclear stockpile in the world. Nevertheless, with the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia was severely weakened. It is geographically the smallest it has been in the last five centuries. A country that formerly fell under its influence has not only exited, but joined the orbit of NATO. An institution founded on defense of Western Europe from Russian advances. At the onset of NATO, the closest NATO capital city was Copenhagen, Denmark, 970 miles from Moscow, separated by the Baltic Sea. Now, the closest NATO capital city is Vilnius, Lithuania, 490 miles from Moscow. This trend, along with the rising China to its southeast, implies that time and attrition are synonymous for the Russian bear. In fact, Russia will need to be aggressive and assertive to avoid losing further ground, while at the same time avoiding direct conflict with major powers, which can lead to further concessions or more extreme consequences. I for India. India possesses one of the largest populations in the world, second only to China. But unlike China's population, which has plateaued and will retract, India's population is still growing, on course to be the largest population in the world on a landmass one-third the size of China. India's diaspora is the largest in the world, and they have been extremely successful in building global networks, sending the largest remittances in the world back to India. Although not the prolific manufacturer to scale up China, it has positioned itself as a human capital value add center. It cuts and polishes 90% of global diamond production as a top five producer and exporter of refined petroleum. Indians are also awarded three out of every four H-1B visas, single-handedly changing the face of Silicon Valley. Of all these countries, India has the highest ceiling, but faces many challenges, primarily in how they continue to handle its growing population and its ability to foster a cogent approach to the global order. India is a series of worlds 
in a country on a subcontinent. It spends much of its energy nurturing internal cohesion and avoiding foreign entanglements. I for Iran. Before the Iranian Revolution in the late 70s, Iran was on its way to being the preeminent power in the Middle East. For the decade prior to the revolution, its economic growth rates had been double digits and oil revenues in the five years prior to the revolution had exceeded $1 trillion in today's currency. Iran was also noted for its relative tolerance during the time. Under Shah Mohammad Pahlavi, Iran had turned from a debtor nation to a creditor, increased per capita GDP, and seemed on the verge of dominating the region due to its industrial production and historic cultural influences. Then the revolution, led by Ayatollah Khomeini, happened. Subsequently, in one form or another, theocratic Iran has been a global pariah suffering from sanctions with a poor human rights record. Slowly, Iran has been expanding its influence, challenging the Middle East status quo of the Sunni power structure and supporting the Shiite fashions of the region such as Hezbollah in Lebanon, President Assad Alawite regime in Syria, the Houthis in Yemen, and Shiite militias in Iraq. Iran's ability to provide support to these movements despite heavy sanctions speak to the ingenuity and capacity of the Iranian people. There are very few countries as well equipped in natural resources as Iran. It has access to coal, uranium, oil, copper, iron ore, natural gas, gold, and zinc to name a few. This arsenal of resources in one country is extremely rare, let alone a country the size of Iran. That's just uncanny. Between its resources and cultural influences from the Levant to Tajikistan, Iran is a force to be accounted for. P is for Pakistan. Anywhere else in the world, Pakistan will be considered a major power. But neighboring India and China, this country is often overlooked. Let's take account. Pakistan has over 200 million people and is projected to surpass Indonesia as the most populated Muslim country on earth at over 300 million people by mid-century. It is one of the nine countries in the world that possess nuclear weapons. Now match this with the fact that in 2014, Time published an article, Nine Countries That Hate America Most. Number one were the Palestinian territories, and number two was Pakistan. To put this into perspective, number five was Iraq, who a decade prior was invaded by forces led by the US. Let us also remember that it was in Pakistan where Osama bin Laden sought and was provided with refuge. In addition, as a regional player, the Pakistani ports of Gwadar and Karachi feeds the landlocked countries of Central Asia. Now akin to India, much of Pakistan's energy is spent on internal cohesion. Pakistan ranks number 10 in the 2021 overall terrorism index score. A major problem being Balakistan separatists in the West. Also, Pakistan neighbors Afghanistan to its north, who is number one in the same report. T is for Turkey. Of all the Crip 6, Turkey, from a capacity standpoint, has the lowest ceiling and the highest floor. The low ceiling, as they are not as large demographically or geographically as the other members, nor as well endowed in resources. But the high floor is due to the fact that Turkey has the greatest access to Western commerce and military technology due to its involvement in NATO. Turkey has gone from the sick man of Europe to somewhat of an enemy behind the gates, sheltered by the ages of NATO. Turkey is allowed the highest defense in NATO, a mutually defensive military alliance including the United States, United Kingdom, and France. All nuclear powers and three out of the five members of the UN Security Council. Couple this with being outside of the EU currency system, Turkey has positioned itself as a low-cost producer on the periphery of a capital-rich Europe, allowing itself to develop industrially. 
Turkey has also utilized its geography to corral a network of the outlying energy-rich region, making itself an energy feeding tube to a hungry Europe. These six countries are major players in the coming world order. The West, as well as each other, will seek to establish fashion blocks amongst these countries to counter each other and exploit areas of conflict. For example, India and Pakistan in Kashmir, Iran and Turkey in the Caucasus, or Russia and China in Central Asia. Each one of these six has their own strength and weakness while operating at different stages of development. But what is certain is that the die has been cast and they cannot be ignored or denied.